like our conversation. Right now. That's what happens to me half the time. That's why I can't wait to get a studio. Sure. Because it'll already be set up. Yes. And like once we start talking, it's on record and I don't have to. Hey, what was that thing that we were talking yeah. about? Yeah. You know, which I found is, is definitely. That's why I was asking about the editing because I think we've talked about so much stuff off the record so yeah. far that. Maybe it you know it was good stuff too. So for sure, I mean obviously there wasn't a microphone out there. I'm just saying like right now, like yeah, there yeah, be something where you know you throw it in there or whatever. For sure, yeah. fucking Susio Talk, hanging out in New Orleans here. Uh, what is the exact address we're at here? Thirty fifty four Saint Claude Avenue. All right, I'm sitting here at Saint Germain with uh, Chef Blake Aguilard and Trey Smith. Chefs, how are you? Great. How are you? Doing fucking well. Doing amazing. Well. Thanks for having me. Uh, long time listeners, first time callers, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, cheers. What are we What are we drinking on here? This is the Braun Riesling. It's just like a really crisp. We've had this one for a while. It's just yeah, something we really like. I'm sure. Um, and we'll get into it as we talk about Saint Germain. But when you open a wine bar, you're obviously this wealth of knowledge comes with that that you had no idea about when you were doing just food. Right? Correct. Sure. Sure. I mean. Though I'll say this about I'll say this about the wine, you know, you learn more than ever that you stick to your guns in terms of what gets you excited, and that's what got you to open the bar in the first place. Right. But then you get people that are very talented with wine around you, and they're the ones who make it possible. You Her. know, so it's it's one of those things. It's like I think I kind of had the idea that when we got when we opened the place, you know, it's like oh, let's try wines and see which ones we like and things like that. But one thing I've learned, so we have this uh, sommelier, Bodhi, who's incredible. Mm -hmm. But it's like the stuff that he picks out for us is so much better than what we would have picked out. It's an intimate relationship that a Sam and a chef have. Oh, for sure. You know, like they they know your palate. It's like it's almost like you're married. Like they know your heart. You know what I'm saying? It's like they know how to get to you. Yes. And uh, I think that that's really important when you look for a Sam. But, uh, you know, as always, uh, we got two chefs on the podcast today, so we're actually going to Pulp Fiction it a little bit, all okay. right? Okay. So, Trey, well, who's older? Blake I'm is older. older. Okay. Yeah, then Blake, Blake, 38 years old. We'll start with you. Where were you born? Uh, I was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana in uh, 1983. Awesome. 1983. Yeah, okay. August 12th. Um, very cool. Uh, growing, growing up in uh, Baton Rouge, what was, uh, what was your upbringing like? Um, well, I'll say... Um, a lot of the time, it was just me and my mom. Uh, my parents got divorced when I was uh, five. Okay. Uh, at bef- even before that, my dad worked a lot. Um, they got divorced. We moved from um, near, say, New Roads, Rugon, Louisiana, like really, really uh, country area. Yeah. You know, you're driving through cornfields and things like that to get there. Perfect. Um, you know, real, 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 you know, far away from New Orleans and different lifestyle. Um, but my mom wanted to, um, she worked at a bank. Um, she wanted to kind of just get you know get away from that area and kind of just you know get more in the city. So we moved to Baton Rouge, um, and I just remember my upbringing being uh, you know a lot of just based around food. You know, me and my mom were like very close. Um, my grandmother cooked a lot. My great grandmother cooked a lot. Um, were you know, only just like an entire uh, no, no no okay um, gotcha. So she got remarried when I was twelve. And okay, then I had three more siblings. Oh there. dope. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Gotcha. So, it, it, so it you're a big brother. A, yeah. yeah definitely. <laughs> It was me and her for a, for a fair bit of time. You know, we lived in this little bitty apartment, and I just remember always, like, helping with food and wanting to cook and just being, you know, just drawn to cooking, you know. Um, and so it started for me at a very young age, and just because, um, you know, my grandmother and that, like, we had that whole kind of quintessential, like, country, you know, gather around the table, you know, there's always food cooking. Like, yeah. They're, um, you know, going to Coca Dree to get shrimp, to go get, you know, 50 pounds of shrimp and peel shrimp together and, you know, you know, freeze it and make gumbo yeah. for like the year, you know, or make crawfish bisque for like the year. Yeah. So, you know, the entire family would get together, make crawfish bisque, make, you know, gallons of it, bag it up, and then everybody takes some home and then yeah. you just always have it. So over the years, you just build up like this, you know, um, stockpile. This stockpile of all these things. So there was just always food. So when it was time for me to start cooking, I just remember watching shows like Emerald and things like that and just being able to go in the deep freezer and just pull things out. Yeah. There's always something. And then I just would be cooking things by myself till, you know, one, two in the morning sometimes. You yeah. Know, at like, you know, 10, 12 years old. Um, my Where'd mom that? started having kids again when she when I was 12. You good? 
um, and I would just start, you know, like helping cook dinner every night, mm-hmm. just, you know, kind of wanting to do it. But then at the same time, she needing help. You yeah. Know? Um, on the other and, side of that, in school, were you in any sports or anything like that? Were yeah, I played. Um, I played uh, football for a few years, and I played basketball and baseball, mainly basketball. Though. Oh, dope. Okay, yeah. got yeah. you. Um, what was your first job? My first job was actually at a skating rink. Oh, dope. Yeah, dope. Yeah. All right. Uh, second job though was at a barbecue place uh, called Podna's Barbecue. Yeah. Um, Why'd you leave the rink? Uh, I, to be honest with you, I really don't remember. Yeah. Um, uh, I think like, I just had kind of. Uh, Played my time out there. I think I was there for maybe a year or so, and yeah. kind of just yeah. Like I cleaned my last yeah. skate today. This is terrible. And I remember it being like one of my, it was like a social, like one of my fo- first like real big social arenas. You okay, know, like meeting a lot of people that you didn't know beforehand. You know, um, I went to Catholic school, and a lot, most of the people that I worked with went to public school and other areas. So yeah, I think it was just. I think at a certain point, I just kind of was ready to move on to something else. Yeah, and this barbecue yeah. space, how'd that come apart? Um, or about. I almost just think it was, um, I just liked eating the barbecue and they were just like, for me, it was like at a time, I mean, I was like 16 years old, so it's not like getting jobs was like really easy, Mm -hmm. you know, like when you're that young, it's like, who's hiring a 16 year old? I can't even imagine hiring a 16 year old. It just, it just seems almost like, well, back in the day and I think, I think things have changed now, but back in the day it was, uh, you need six months experience. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. You yeah. need a year's experience. Yeah, and I think we've realized up to this point that no experience is way better. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Right. you could really train yeah. them. You know, yeah, you're right. And yep. I, I was just always a hard worker. I had a lot of chores growing up. We had um, like so when we left Baton Rouge and my mom got remarried, we moved and got like a four acre land lot, and um, you know built a house. And I had a lot of chores. Like I was cutting grass on a tractor like every Saturday Mm -hmm. cutting grass around the house with a push mower weed eating like a pond like a lot of chores um like a day (laughs) of chores yeah like all my friends were playing and doing stuff I I had chores till 6 p.m yeah Saturday and then homework and then so I just worked hard I just always had like a hard working um you know mentality yeah so when it was time to get a job I wanted extra money I remember I want I wanted a cell phone I was even selling cell phones um when I was a junior and a senior in high school. Oh, like no way. on the side for Nextel. Okay. And it was just like an after-school Nextel. job. Nextel, you're yeah. bringing it back. Yeah, yeah. Beep. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. Like, <laughs> I, I, just, I was just always like trying to hustle to make money. You know, if I wanted something that my parents said you had to pay for, then I was like figuring out how to do it. So if, if I needed a job, I would just get my mom to drive me around, and I would just put an application out at 20 places. And yeah. Then, you know, Someone pick, will you know whoever called. You yeah. Know, you know? We had Tanger, Tanger Outlet Malls. There's, I don't know how many, a hundred different stores there. So just go there and just put an application to every place and then get hired somewhere. Well. Yeah. So, yeah. Just always kind of hustling. Um, Got you. So when did, uh, after you leave high school, what's your plan then? So I wanted to be a chef, but the first real fine dining meal I had was with John Fulce at Lafitte's Landing, the original one before it burned down. Um, I interviewed him in eighth grade for what did I want to be when I grow up. And I wanted to be a chef. Um, so even at that point, you know, in eighth, in eighth grade, I wanted to be a chef. Um, okay. I had this meal. It changed my life. It was inspiring. You know, they, he printed me out these menus with my name on it for my birthday. Um, my mom had sent him over um, like a big like bouquet of flowers, and we had pictures taken, all this stuff. We went to his recording studio, did this thing. and But by the time I got to college, I found out what it was the chef life was about and I was I don't want to work that much I don't want to like not have a family I don't want to never be home things like that so I just went to traditional I went to southeastern um to be an accountant yeah um, which was I mean my stepdad was an accountant that's the only reason why I even picked that you know I had no idea what I wanted to do but I picked something that was you know um you know close to normal um (laughs) that didn't work out for me yeah you know kind of partied a little bit too much got in a bunch of trouble da 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 Got things back together, then decided to go to culinary school. Okay. When Where'd you go to culinary school? I went to Le Cordon Bleu in Austin. Oh, dope. Yeah. Did you, uh, was that your first choice or did you have any other choices? That was my first choice. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I looked around, looked at prices, things like that. And my, I, I mean, I, I was at a point I was getting in so much trouble that my grandmother was like, if you go to culinary school, I will pay for it if you don't ever make anything less than like a B. Yeah. And, but the thing was, was at that point, I really wanted to do that. And so I didn't make anything less than a B. I think I graduated with like a, a 3.6 or so. Which yeah, I yeah. Never, I mean, I was always like a 
C to B student at best. You know, I just if I wasn't interested in something, I just didn't try that much. What right? area of Austin was that in? Uh, that was uh, let's see, like I think the name was like I mean I lived in like Pflugerville. Yeah, um, that area was Burnett Street, I think. Gotcha. What year was area. this? Maybe 2005, maybe? Got you. So I'm just trying to get this I graduated story. high school in 2002, and I went to college for a few years. So Heard. Yeah, I think about 2005 or so. It's so. crazy to think about where Austin is now compared oh, to yeah. then, right? There's probably yeah. nothing then, right? Only a few restaurants. I mean, I had a small apartment. I had a nice, one, a nice, nice one-bedroom apartment for like $500. Oh I don't think God. that's like that that's not even no more. There is no place for that. <laughs> like, you know, that, that same apartment is probably 1500 or $2,000 yeah. now. I mean, Dope. But it was my first time, like, you know, being from a small, you know, kind of country area, leaving for the first time. It was like a very big um, um, change for me. And, but I just had that. I wanted to, to be an adventure. You know, like I had the yeah. romance of, like, I want to go out and go, go after something. Gotcha. You know, like I had no idea where that even came from. But I guess maybe just watching chef shows and things like that and just seeing what, what, what chefs had, um, the stories they told, the things they've been through. And I was like, I got to do that. Yeah. You know, like, I don't want to just be another one that stays here and cooks here and never leaves. I, I want to be somebody that goes out and goes on all these adventures. Heard and that. I, um, you know, I went to, to Austin for a few years. Then I went to Reno. And then I kind of got addicted to the, the traveling, the moving, the, the adventure, yeah. the restart, the things like that. And then... Back to New Orleans to work at Restaurant August. Uh, stayed there for, I think it was three and a half years. Three and a half worked, years. Not, and which is where I met Trey. Yeah. Um, where did you, uh, right after Cordon Bleu, first of all, does Cordon Bleu have an internship program? Yeah. Um, are, are they called it an externship? Yeah. What did yeah. you, where did so you do your externship? That was at uh, the, the Pepper Mill in Reno, Nevada. The Pepper so, Mill in yeah, Reno, Nevada. Uh, that's, so that's casino. what got you to Reno. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Basically, how, yeah, yeah. How long did you stay in Reno? Two years. Two years at yeah. that same place. Yeah. So you got hired on after your externship yes. was over. Yeah. Okay. I stayed there. I worked at. I worked my. I had to start off on banquets, um, and then I went to a grill. Uh, I forget the name. Oceana Grill or something like that. It yeah. Was like a seafood sushi kind of thing, and then I went to work at the the fine dining thing called the White Orchid at the time, and that was like the first fine dining french style restaurant that i worked at that was like I heard you know, that like hard you know what made you make the move from that restaurant um i think just i had a girlfriend at the time there was a shaky breakup yeah you know things was kind of going south you had to get it was out just time to get, it's time to move yeah you know for sure I mean? like I, I i'd worked my way from a low level banquet person to a high level cook at a good restaurant you know for that like you know, age, yeah, age span, hundred percent. It was like there wasn't really anywhere else to go at that point. And gotcha. Came home. Um, the pastry chef Steve Crisman that I worked with, I, I'd also did pastries like kind of like on my off time, like okay, like I got paid, but it was kind of like on my off days, you know, yeah. just to get more experience. I did sushi on my days off too, yeah, you know. Um, yeah, came back, worked for August for three and a half years, worked my way up from Garmage to sous chef yeah. to running all the banquets and things there. And then Heard. that's how we got sent to, to Europe to work in the Black Forest. Okay. Um, Trey went before me. When he got back, I went. Then when I got back, we both basically had um, had other plans. I tried to go work at Uchi in Austin. Okay. Did a couple, I actually did a couple weeks stage before I went to Germany and then a couple weeks before uh, when I got back. And there was some kind of... Uh, miscommunication between who was supposed to contact me to hire me and one person thought that they were going to hire me. The other one was... <laughs> so I never heard back. And so um, when I didn't hear back, I just assumed I didn't get the job. So um, I talked to Mike Galata and he said that him and Trey were on par to open up his place. And so I just said, well, fuck it, let's do it. You know, like Mike was one of my, I guess maybe my first mentor. Yeah. Um, so we went on board and me and Trey helped him open that restaurant together. Got um, you. And that's in the Black Forest, you're saying? No, no, no. That oh, that's when I got back. Mofo's here. Got you. Yeah. yeah. So um, August, um, that's that restaurant is obviously very like highly regarded here. It yeah. still is like doing its thing over there, or what? Because uh, I haven't been in a while and I haven't heard much, so I don't know if it's like. Yeah. Um. I mean, we we know what it was like when we were there. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. been so long. Did since they change we... owners or anything, or same same people? It's the same owner, but it's just. 
the thing was, it's our connection to it were the people that we work with there, and yeah. they have all since left. So okay, we just don't, got you. We just yes. don't have the connection to anybody that's working there.